To say I'm excited about this review will be an understatement because today we get to take a look at the Wago 221 inline connector and we've had it at the studios for some time but we weren't allowed to do the review until they had some stock in the UK and by the looks of things we've got some stock in the UK. Some stock, yeah, you've scattered it all over the bench in the excitement opening the box. Yeah, we have actually also sneaked it into some of our earlier videos last year. It's in the background, we've been using it for a while and we think it's a great solution. You may already be using it, but stick around because we've got some accessories you may not have seen, and we're also gonna show you how to fit in with some of the existing Wago boxes that we use in electrical installations. But thinking of this product, obviously the end-to-end, -end, what did we used to use? Well, we've got some down here. We used to use the butt or splice crimp that I've got here of course, to join conductors together. However, a quick look at those, I can't see a current or voltage rating on them. And uh, what material are they made out of? Yeah, and that's one of the questions we always have when it comes to that. There's so many different manufacturers of that who don't put the name on the side. Try and find a current rating for those. Try and find approval. Yeah. And, and yeah, so we've taken some to bits and yeah, they may not be made of copper. No, I yeah. saw some brass one time. Yeah, so hugely variable quality, but obviously with Wego, we know we're getting great German quality and we've got bags of approval. So I guess we first, let's dive in and have a look at approvals first, Gary, because a lot of people, uh, there's a little bit of confusion comes in sometimes on that because this is, has approvals for all over the world. And let's start with the one we should be familiar with. So for Europe, we've got the NEC mark there and the product rated at 450 volts, 32 amps. Same for the US and under there you will see the UL mark. Moving across to this side, so this is where people get a bit confused because you see this PSE mark and then suddenly the, uh, the current drops to 20 amps. Um, but that is for Japan and obviously the way their electrical system works, they've approved it for what they'd typically expect to see and that's uh, obviously their voltage current rating and you can see conductor sizes 1.6 to 2 millimeters however what is standard across the world regardless of where you are it is an 11 millimeter strip length and that is shown on the side and obviously if you if you're in america they're in the uh, awg gauge which we don't understand but it always goes in reverse all right okay Th yeah. thank you for that <laughs> now when we think about the conductors that can go in there there is a subtle difference than the other connectors in that 221 series isn't that there is now we uh, and you have to work hard to uh, to spot this or read the instructions on the front, the front of the, the box. box. Yeah, there is. And apparently you can win an electric van okay. as well with Wago. Yeah, there's a I little don't know sticker to peel off. Depends there. on when you're watching. We may have won it already, um, but I think the more you buy, the more chances you get to win, is okay. what it says in there. So yeah. we've got one chance. I think there's another one of those that will be scanning later on. Okay. So the difference in conductors is the regular side-by-side -side two to one will take four millimeters in any conductor type, so solid, stranded and fine stranded. Okay, so that's class one, class two, and class five conductors we looked at before. Yep, there is one slight anomaly with the inline right. that it will take a four millimeter solid and a four millimeter fine stranded. Okay, yeah. But it will not accept a four millimeter stranded conductor. So it won't do the class two conductors to four millimeter, it stops at 2.5. Yeah. So when we're thinking of those conductors, we're probably thinking of conductors in steel or armored cable, or maybe the conductors that we're pulling in through a conduit system, it stops at 2.5. Yeah. Have you got it. one there? Yes, yeah, got one here, but this is a 2.5, so this will this will, will go, go in. in. Okay, so you can strip um, that one for yeah, me. Let's strip it, so again, I'm just gonna go for our 11 millimeter strip length. Okay. And you can just, uh, I can check that on the side. Okay, so let's oh, have a look. Put the, a little yeah. look. So you're going for your 11 mil. So there's our 11 mil. Okay, yeah, I'd say that's 11 mil, yeah. And, there we go, so and as it's class two, you're going to have to lift the levers. Uh, class one, you can just push them straight in, can't you? Yeah, let's tidy that up. I don't know who's been messing with this cable. Okay. There we go. So oh, trimming it back one at a time, are we? Okay. Yeah, Super snips. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to bring those in. So again, yeah, lift the lever. And again, the great thing about these connectors, yeah. invisibility, and you can see you've made a great connection yeah, underneath. That's, that's good, yeah, clear. And then obviously we're gonna join them together, lift the lever, insert the conductor at 11 mil, close yeah. that off. And if I pull that, that is an incredible amount of force to pull them apart. And if you try that in a, um, in a, in a butt crimp or a through crimp, you do get varying results and we found that we had a trip to the gym where we even tried that out we weren't working out we were hanging uh, weights off them but that's a yeah that's a great great connection so we've got some applications down here we're going to use it in different ways in order to join conductors together so where do you want to start which one are we going for first we'll start with a flex okay and... there's some flex here all made up ready to go so yeah I've, I've done a bit of the prep work for you yeah and we'll start Ooh, with you've this, got one of the bases uh, yes so we've got a carrier here 
So I want to bring the uh, yeah, we'll camera in for this, Gary. Um, so these come in one, two, three, and five way variants. And when you say way, that's the number of inline connectors that can be inserted. So this is a three way, yes? Yeah. So people immediately said, oh, they're doing it in single way through. What are they going to do? Double and triple way versions. No, they're not, because you just use this carrier and you click these in, just slots. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So they're not going to make uh, larger ones of these, they're just going to line them up together. So click onto the carrier. That's great, isn't it? Because then you don't need to carry loads of different connectors, uh, stock variants. Yeah. So again, they're in there, nice and secure. Lifted the levers. Okay, you can bring your flex in now. So yep. I should have made those off. Hopefully I've yeah, just about got them for you. So, okay, so drop okay. those in, slide them into drop position. Them in. And then can we tie wrap in place, can't we? Is these holes here I'll for tie wrapping? Yeah, we can do the other end first. I'll match the colors. That would be handy, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so through we go. So we've joined that flex through. Yeah. So where are you thinking you might be mounting this? Obviously we're gonna put some tie wraps in. Where would you be mounting this in relationship to an enclosure? Yeah, I mean, I think it could be in a, in a control panel, possibly even in some trunking. There's a, there's a question to answer there, putting connections inside uh, trunking. Oh, if that's a question, I'm sure that's a question for Joe Robinson to come up to. Yeah. So, so there we yeah, go. So Torrep's yeah. going to come in there, so that will hold that in place. Yeah, brilliant. So that can be mounted inside an enclosure and we've secured the flex with the tie wraps. Yeah, that was a simple process, wasn't it? Yeah. It's been quite satisfying as well. We, we've been playing with them off camera, like we said, for a while now, but actually clipping them into place and they're very tactile, aren't they? You know, yeah. a, there's a nice sensation when obviously install the Anyway Go connector, but that inline one uh, yeah, is right yeah. up there for and me. And I'd say, you know, if you think, if you were using butter through crimps, it, yeah. takes, it takes quite a bit of time to join them together because you're, you're balancing using the tool, inserting the conductor, and then obviously, yeah, you've got to remember to twist, and depend on the crimp tool you've got, remember to twist the crimp yeah, tool yeah, you have to, yeah, yeah, nearly all of them have to flip. You've got one that didn't, but yeah, you have to flip it over. Yeah. No issues there at all, is there? So that's, uh, that's connecting flex with cams together. There's another variant of the carrier as well. Okay, and is that for anything special? Well, if you bring in the camera, so you'll see this one is... So there's little nibs on it, yeah? Yeah, so you can punch this through sort of prepared steel work. So I'm thinking if you're a light fitting manufacturer, you punch some holes in your steel and these little pins will just click in and sort of got little barbs on so they'll snap into place. Okay, yeah. So that's a nice little uh, useful addition and that, uh, that, that, does, that doesn't have the, uh, the grips on it. But again, comes in different size options. And they've got one that can go in this uh, Wago light box as well, have we? Yeah, so one of the, uh, well, a few of the variants. On the back of here, you can clip an accessory plate. Okay, yeah. That then allows it to mount into uh, the, into the uh, Wago, Wago box light. Yes. Which is designed for lighting applications. Uh, and there's also a DIN rail mount version of that as well. But here's one. You prepared earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, so again, if I just cut the ties off. So, look in here. so this is joining a one millimeter squared twin CPC cable to a flex. Yeah. That's something regularly done, isn't it? Yeah, so. and we've got a high bare light on the end of there. So if I just pop this out. Okay. And that, that plate, ah, it's got an extra plate on the back of it. Yeah, and you can see where those nibs are clipped in. Yeah, the accessory plate. And that's held it into position within the box and it goes off to that high bay light there. Yeah, that's and that's common because lots of light fittings. I've got another one here, often you see these, these panel lights. Yeah, these things, uh, they always come with a yeah, short length of flexible cable and you've got to find a, a reliable connector and that's a great... Uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was brilliant, wasn't it? Well, simple process, wasn't it, in order to make those connections. And when it's sat in and you clip that box down there, again, it goes back to that words I've used earlier on in the presentation, satisfying, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's... That is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, really yeah. good. And one other uh, subtle difference when you think about the test points. Right, there's now, two, isn't there, on these? Ah, uh -huh. there's two on the original. Oh, right, okay. Yep. So on the original 221, if we just, uh, just bring the... What have I been caught out of? Yep, so on the original one, you've got a test point in the front there. Yes. Yep. And flip it over, you've got a test point in the back. Yep. Yep, so obviously... Uh, this one, obviously, to squeeze it into the single one, there's a test point in right in the middle of the connector. Okay, well, the only way to do that is to prove so it. So we've got a metal light fitting over there, haven't we? So yep. you could do a continuity from that so, protective conductor. So I'm just going to uh, turn it around. I'll get to use our wag or oh, probes. Oh, got, you I'll got it. this bit. Wait for the sound. Champagne. Like a champagne <laughs> bottle opening. So I'll do that, just put that on to... Fizzy all uh, round. Now with test probes. Okay. Uh, let's just go for a continuity test. Okay, so we're going to measure from the actual Wago light box to the fitting itself, that protective conductor. I'm going to check you've got continuity. Check that. Press that button then. 
And there we go. Yeah, we'll go with that as the aroma. That's good enough for me. So. Yeah. So right, okay. So let's have a look where this is going. Put so, the test probe in. Right in the centre there. Yes. Right in the centre there. And the good thing about these probes, you just look them well past, and there's obviously the insulation goes right up to the end of the almost to the end of the tip. Yes. So that satisfy your GS38 requirements, which for such a fine pointed tip. probe. And you're just going onto a bolt there, are you? Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of bare metal, metal is right there. So we've got a noise, we've got a beep, yeah, we've got a continuity between the centre of the protective conductor there on the Wago 221 across to the metallic light fitting to prove that uh, test point in there. Yeah, so I would argue actually in, in this kind of application, having that right in the middle, I've opened the box up. Right. Uh, have to, I don't have to go into the end of the yeah, connector. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. actually makes fault finding uh, and testing a lot easier, doesn't it? A lot it? easier. Yeah, so, a good point. Yeah, so that little adapter plate in there, great, in that existing Wago box. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's getting, we've all been waiting for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we, yeah. I think we'll be seeing quite a bit of them on the channel. And of course, I don't think anyone out there is saying this wasn't something that we wanted. And I'm sure we're going to have all the questions below, hopefully all positive about this Wago 221 inline connector. However, it is your feedback that obviously drives us on and drives the community on. We will try and answer as many of the questions that you pose in there as we can. However, if you've got the answer and you can beat us to it, as always, please answer it on our behalf. And we'll also read your comments and your feedbacks as well.